We on now? And we're on. Um, I just wanted to say that I missed you. It is nice to be back. If you're still on your phones, can you put it away? My mom died, um, and so that's where I was last week. Um, she, I got there Wednesday, um, and she died Wednesday night. So it was a blessing that I was able to be with my mom. Um, you know, I held her hand and kissed her, and she died that night. Um, but we were all together, and so that was good. Um, and then just kind of taking care of my dad. My heart right now is kind of torn in two places. I want to be here with my family and y'all, but I also want to be um, in Vermont with my dad and my family back there. So, ew, that was like a yucky thing that we had to do. But if you could get out your materials, I'd greatly appreciate it because Greg's back in town and we had some work to do. So if you could get out your notebook, I would appreciate it. I also heard that we had a death um, in our community here, and I'm just really sorry for your loss. Um, for those of you that knew that young man, um, I did not personally know him, um, but I'm so sorry for you and for what you are going through um, with the death in our community. Um, all right, so it says pick up the handout on the way in, fill in your table of contents, and then write down the capture question. Let's check out this capture question. It says look at the paper strips hanging from the doorway and explain where the high and low pressure is located. So it's all about the air, and we see some strips of paper, and we see those strips of paper moving. Based on how they're moving, where would we have a high pressure system and a low pressure system? You are going to use hallway and classroom as your two areas of air. Put your stuff away and get your notebook out. So we're going to be looking at where the high pressure system is and the low pressure system is. And then we are going to hop into what we're doing for the rest of the day. All of my markers are gone. Well, that's cool. So I'm going to give you some time to work on that. Today's date is Monday, April 3rd. I cannot believe it. So we're going to try to figure out where is high pressure and where is low pressure based on what we see. So I'm going to go ahead and put one minute up on the board. And by that, I mean just here. And that will give you an opportunity to take attendance. Oh, God, I love you guys. Anybody going, uh, anybody participating in the track meet today after school? Anybody going to the track meet today after school? Yes, it's a, it's a boy-girl um, unified track meet, so it's here at the school. I'm going to shut up now. You've got 47 seconds. Write this down, and then we'll come back together. All right, and in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, well, that's kind of a letdown. Uh, oh, there it is. All right, so we'll stop that. Um, let's go ahead and share the pressure partner. Where would there be high pressure? Where would there be low pressure? Based on what you are seeing, those do. Ready, set, go. Less. High pressure, low pressure. All right, anybody want to give it a go? Want to give it a shot? Want to give it a go or a shot? What do you think? Ah, Rebel says high pressure is in the hallway. How many of you agree with Rebel? High pressure is in the hallway. I have one, two, three, four. I've got a lot of people. Say again. I agree with you that it is. How do you know somebody else other than Rebel? So we've got high pressure hallway, which means that we have low pressure classroom. What was the indicator? Yeah. Paper strips are blowing in. And? Yeah, air moves from high to low pressure. Air always moves. 
Can you turn that just a little bit this way, sweetie, so that they can see me? Always moves from high to low pressure. So just think about the uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. High, low, high, low, it's off the pressure we go. Ba -dum -bum -bum, ba -dum -bum -bum. High, low, high, low, which way does the wind blow? From high to low. So it's moving in this direction. Let's see if we can change it. Um, I wonder if I open the windows in here, would I be able to create a high pressure system in here? Do these windows open? Oh my God, I don't know if these windows open. Oh my gosh, hi, I marked you absent. Are you okay? Yeah, okay. Miss Eccleston email. Okay, great. We are just writing down the question no, of the day. Okay. <laughs> we, hey, can someone uh, shut that front door really quick? Thanks, okay. Let's shut that door, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this window, and we're going to see, to see that. if we can change the pressure. Wait, which way goes Lucy and Lefty? So we go this way. Lefty, Lucy. Righty tighty. Do you want help? I got you. Thank you. Are you sure about that? What's happening? All right, so I've got this window open. And then I'm going to see if we can go ahead and change the air pressure in here so that, because um, right now, we see these strips of paper. Can you make sure that every single strip of paper? Cold, get it so we got these strips of paper, and they're just kind of here. So let's see if we've changed the air pressure in here enough. we always say it's coming out of the. So if this was our compass, north, south, west, east, we would say the wind is coming out of the southwest, coming out of the southwest because it's going here. It always goes into the station model. So it's coming out of the southwest. Um, what's next? Oh, this is the wind speed. If you have more of these little doohickeys at the end, the faster um, the wind is. Oops, sorry about that. And then that last one, come on. 
That last one is dew point. Oh, goodness, you got this. Oh, sure, sure, no problem. Sure, 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 sure. By the way, um, yeah, anyway, anyway, it's fine. Look, it's fine. Look how everything is just like fine. There we go. This last one is um, the dew point. And that's the temperature at which dew, <coughs> dew will form. So right now, um, the temperature would be 31 degrees. If the temperature dropped down to 26, that means that dew would start to form. Uh, water would start to come out of the air. All right. These are the cloud cover station models. So you can kind of see. This would be like, you know, nine-tenths cover, so almost all covered. Obstructed view just means not enough information we can't see. And again, there's that wind speed where you have, you know, we, we measure wind in knots. And if it's like this, it's very calm, but the more kind of complicated the end gets, the higher the winds. All right. And then you did a pair share, yes? Great. We talked about it. Fabulous general weather patterns. We talked about air pressure. Is that right? Great. Air pressure, one of the most important factors that determines what our weather is going to be like. Yep, it's the very last one, bud. High pressure means fair weather. It's going to be a nice day because you've got air falling, which means clouds can't form. Low pressure means air is rising and cooling, forming clouds. So uh, you can get storms or rain. All right. We did this pair share. Did you find out the weather patterns here, high and low pressure? These are isobars, and what you do is you just circle, like this is, you know, 1,008, 1,008, 1,008, so you circle that, right? And you see that in the middle of here is this high or low pressure? Low pressure, because it's going from higher numbers down to lower numbers. And this one is high pressure, because it's got the higher numbers in the middle. All right. Based on our map. Yep, okay, now we're gonna do fronts. So we're gonna start here. What is a front? Does everybody see that? What is a front? Did we get through that already? Yeah. Holy crap, what have you guys gotten to then? Yeah. Technology? This is a really good, um, so fronts are important because if you have a cold front coming in, cold fronts are more dense. Remember, cold is more dense, so it's gonna wedge itself underneath warm air, shoving that warm, moist air up, and that's going to make that um, air cool and form clouds. And then from those clouds, you get storms. All right, forecasting. Are we here? Yeah. Great. And if you were gone on Friday, I've posted this on today's date, this uh, PowerPoint for you. So twice a day, every day, 900, look where it's underlined, 900 weather balloons are released into the atmosphere across the globe. Why do they do this? These balloons measure pressure, temperature and relative humidity as they go into the atmosphere. There's a picture of one. And this little bag contains like a little weather lab. And it's constantly monitoring at different levels in the troposphere uh, what the temperature is, what the humidity is, so that weather people can go ahead and predict uh, what the temperature or what the weather will be like. And there's another picture. And that's what they do. Twice a day they put those up there. Uh, Doppler radar. This obtains weather information based on return energy from a signal that the radar emits. That's just words, words, words. Does anybody know what an uh, echo is? Echo? You send out energy, whoo, and it bounces back at you. That's what this is. It's sending out like an energy pulse, and it sends it out, and then that pulse bounces off the storm, and it comes back. You know the storm is coming towards you if there's less time, right? I send it out and then it's bouncing back and if it keeps bouncing back and it's getting less and less time, you know that that storm is coming towards you. If it bounces back and it's taking longer to get to you, you know that storm is moving away from you. Um, and it also can detect the precipitation intensity. How strong or fierceful is it raining? Or hailing? Or snowing? and it can tell us the wind direction and the speed. That's what it looks like. So Doppler radar, you hear about a lot on the news, and you'll see pictures like this, and you know, it's this radar loop is just kind of sending out these radar blips, and it tracks these storms, or cloud coverage, or you know, 
hail that's coming at you. Was anybody damaged, their house damaged in the storm from Friday? Thank God, right? Thank God nobody lost their house, or their apartment, or their condo, their place to sleep. Did you know of anybody that had damage? Did you? Say again? Ooh, that is so scary. You were very lucky, very fortunate. Did anybody get hurt or just loss of? That is so scary. All right, long range forecasting. With all these weather forecasting tools available to us, sometimes the weather is still impossible to predict. So we have to have patience, right? Especially the further you move into the future. It'd be kind of like if you have a leaf and a leaf is drifting in a river. In five seconds, looking at that leaf, you can probably predict where it's gonna be in five seconds. Could you predict where that leaf is gonna be in two days? Maybe not. So this is kind of the same thing, right? At 5 a.m. on Friday, on August 26, 2005, this is where Katrina, uh, the hurricane was. But then they're trying to predict that by 2 a.m. Saturday, it may be here, and then Sunday it's gonna be here, and then Monday it's gonna be here. And notice how big the path is, because it could be here or anywhere in here. This is the best they can get, down, they can get with prediction. Right? So it's like the farther out in time you go, the less predictable we know where that storm is going to end. It's just too difficult to predict long term. So please be patient with your weatherman or woman when they say, hey, you know, Friday is going to be a sunny day, you know, 85 degrees, and then you get there and it's like rainy and 65. There's lots of different factors that can change the weather. Yes, I know. I touched the cord. Gosh. All right. That's it. So that is going to be uh, what's up with the weather with our symbols. Now what we're going to do is we're going to dive more into this idea of weather fronts. So you picked up a handout on the way in on weather fronts. Could you please get that out now? I will show you what it looks like. It looks like this. We're going to do some notes on the front, and then you're going to do practice on the back. And I want to let you know I'm collecting these tomorrow. I'm checking them. So um, just to kind of keep you focused. And you can thank your first hour class for that because they were a bunch of pains in my chukuses um, this morning. And I was like, what is happening? Is this how you acted the entire time? The sub was here? So we're going to talk about weather fronts. Are you ready? Are you OK? You look a little off today. You want to talk about it? Let's talk about some weather fronts then. The first one looks like this. From that side, the other side. Cole, flip that over. We're here. Okay, starter. First of all, let's do a little review. What do the colored lines on this map indicate? Okay, it could be storms. What are these colored lines? Fronts. Front lines. What? Front lines. Front lines, yeah, weather fronts. Okay, weather fronts. The red represents what? <laughs> The red represents warm, and the blue represents cold. And if it was a black and white, we would still be able to tell because the cold fronts have got pointy flags and the warm fronts have got the rounded flags. We can look at those flags because those flags tell us the direction that the weather is moving. And when we're talking about it's a front, it's the front of what? An air mass. An air mass. There are lots of different large masses of air. There's four, actually, that you need to know about. Okay, four that you need to know about. So a front is like the front of an air mass. We're gonna talk about what those are. An air mass is a volume of air that is consistent, meaning it's all the same, uh, temperature and humidity. Notice this one is maritime tropical. It formed over water, think maritime marine. So this is gonna be warm, because it's tropical, it's by the equator and it's gonna be wet air. This is warm, moist air. This is continental tropical. Tropical means it's warm. Continental means this air formed over land or a continent, so it's dry. This is dry, warm air. This is wet, warm air. Up here, again, we have the same thing. Maritime polar, now what's the temperature of this air? 
cold. This is cold, wet air, and this now is dry, wet, uh, excuse me, dry, cold air. Dry because it formed over a continent and it didn't have any moisture to absorb into it. All right. Let's start by looking at a cold front. Do you see this picture on your paper? Please label this cold front. You good? All right, symbol, write the symbol down, please. Or draw the symbol, I should say. You don't need to make four different flags, just draw a couple. For the symbol, Hudson, this is your symbol. And remember, it shows the direction. So if I said, hey, which direction is this air mass moving, and I drew a, you know, a compass, it would be moving north. All right. We're going to go ahead and show what happens when a cold front comes into an area. Now, the first thing I want you to realize is what's the sky look like right here? Blue, nice day. Uh, temperature is going to be right here. Let me bring this back a little bit. Okay, it's 66 degrees. Okay, so that's the temperature right now, and this is what the sky looks like. A cold front, a cold mass of air is going to come in. See what happens to the temperature and the cloud cover. What's going on with the temperature? It's, going down. it's dropping because cold air mass is coming in. And when the cold air mass is coming in, cold air is more dense than warm air. So that cold air is wedging itself underneath the warm air and forcing that warm air up to make clouds. It looks like we've got some rain in the background. Okay, so that's what happens when you have a nice warm day and a cold front comes in. This is what was going on Friday. Friday was like in the 70s or something crazy like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was beautiful, right? I was not here. I was in Vermont, but I heard it was just gorgeous. I was glued to the TV like, oh, my God, when they were talking about North Liberty and Iowa City and Coralville. My son works at the Coralville High V, so that was, like, frightening. Um, but that's what happened. So let's go ahead and see what we've got next. Okay, what weather did the cold front bring? This is what you're going to fill in. Cold temperatures, fast-moving winds. You don't have to write precipitation. You can write rain, but you could write precipitation because it's rain, snow. I'm writing this down, Rebel along the front, the edge of the front, and then dry weather later on. Once that cold front comes in and passes, the temperature's lower, and then it's dry, because what it did was it pushed up all that warm, moist air, all that water came out in the form of rain, and then it's a nice dry area again. It's not rocket science, it's weather. Mind your way, Claire? If I ever am, will you please tell me you can't see? Remember, abbreviate. You don't need to write down every single word. Look at the card I got from my other teachers here. It's like a, it's a picture, like, made of all this glitter that they, it's just beautiful. It's got butterflies. Gorgeous. All right, oops, back up, back up, back up. All right, how it forms. Forms when cold air mass pushes under warm air mass. This forces the warm air up. Why does the cold air go under warm air? Because cold air is more dense. Cold air will always go under warm, pushing warm up, making clouds. Sing it. Go. This acts like a wedge, and it very quickly forces warm air um, up and you get a more, um, you get a rainstorm that's a little bit more violent than your normal kind of rainy day. The next situation that we're in is gonna be more of a nice gentle kind of rain for the day. How are you doing, George? Good. Good. Are we good? All right. Now we're gonna do warm front. So this is where a warm air mass is coming into a colder area. All right, here's your 
symbol. Tomorrow we're going to talk about tornadoes. Because, you know, Friday. Wish I could take you on a field trip. All right, we're going to look at a time lapse of what happens when a warm mass of air moves into an area that's already cooler. <clears throat> so again, we have skies. It's probably cool, like, I don't know, maybe 50, 40 degrees. <clears throat> you can see the air is moving in this direction. And then when warm air comes, you can start seeing the clouds are moving in, but it's just kind of like low level, gentle clouds. What's happening in this case is you've got this cold air that is here and you've got this warm air mass that's just slowly rising up and it's forming clouds. And it's just kind of a cloudy day and it might be drizzly, it might just be overcast, but it's not going to be a violent kind of stormy day. A uh, day like this might just be kind of like, you know, gentle rain that's just kind of happening. But you're not going to get like your lightning and your mass winds and all of that. That's not going to happen when a warm air mass moves into a cold air mass. All right, so let's see what the weather. Large areas of clouds. Gentle precipitation along that front. You can say gentle rain or gentle snow. It's very slow moving because the cold air is more dense and it's staying in place. You can't really move that cold air out. So the warm air is just kind of gently on a ramp up that cold air mass. Slowly forming cloud coverage. And then eventually, It'll be warmer and more mild. But possibly still cloudy. It's gonna be 59 today, y'all. Isn't that nice? Give me a little something. Nice weather, huh? Nice. Cold for the track meet. Bring a jacket, but still nice. December 2nd from Kendall. Nice. Anybody watch the game last night? Mm -hmm. Damn. We were, I was like, ah. Oh. You know what though? We got there. But nobody remembers second place. I'll remember. Next year. All right. How does it form? It forms when moist, warm air slides up and over a cold air mass. Cold air is dense, it wants to stay in place. So this thing like drives it, driving a car up a ramp. Just slowly lifts up, the uh, moisture falls out in condensation and forms clouds. Anybody need to come in for liberty time for anything? Great. Sorry about the death in the uh, community too. You know, I, for those of you that knew that young man, my heart goes out to you. Sorry I was not here for you, but I'm here for you now. All right, um, this is, next one is a stationary front. What do you think happens with the air in a stationary front? What? They meet. Yeah, they meet, and then what happens? Mm -hmm. Nothing. They just kind of stall out. So stationary front. This is the symbol used. We can see that we've got one front moving in one direction and one front moving in the other direction. So you might see the warm uh, air moving this way and the cold air moving that way. It doesn't matter. You just know if you see something like this, you've got two masses of air, right? 
warm and cold, and they're meeting in this one place, and there's not a lot of movement. The conditions are such that um, they're not able to get out of there. Okay, we're going to see a stationary front. You shouldn't see too much of a change, not a lot of wind, where you don't see the clouds moving a lot. Whereas in all of our other videos, you saw clouds kind of moving one way or the other. You kind of have really like everything's kind of stalled out. It's just kind of like sitting around. Cloudy day. Don't have to necessarily worry. Maybe it'll rain a little bit, but that's kind of what's going on. Clouds aren't moving. Stationary. I don't know why they feel the need to show us so much. Still in the same area. Clouds are still in the same area. So it's just a stationary front. All right. All right, so what weather did they bring? Stalled clouds or storms. So if it's raining, it's probably gonna be around for a while and rain for a day or two, right? Or maybe all night. Oh, it just kind of rained all night. Clouds and precip precipitation for days, no change in temperature. It's not gonna be really warm and then all of a sudden cool down really quickly. What's up, Cullen? dad just sent a we, we're on all on a big uh, family chat now and my dad I gotta show I gotta tell you what he sent out oh I worry about him he's so great love you all and I miss you hope you have a good week he's a great guy all right how it forms it forms when warm and cold air meet and neither air mass has the force to move the other. So it'd be like two people of similar size and strength, and you're pushing on each other, and no one's really moving. It's stall. Now obviously it's not forever, right? Eventually something moves, or another air mass will come in. By the way, I just want a little shout out to Colin. He was at Science Olympiad um, this weekend and won third place in Green Generation. Yeah, whoop whoop, third oh. place at state. What's, what is it like, like what was the, what was it? It was over like ecosystems and stuff. Ecosystems and stuff, nice job. And you were partners with uh, Nancy. Nancy. Good job, y'all. All right, let's talk about the last one, which is an occluded front. Kind of like a stationary front, but not really. You've got warm air, and now you've got two cold air masses coming in from different directions. And so that warm air is just like really shoved up really quickly, and you get a lot of energy that's dumped out, and so you got a big storm. Here's our symbol. Notice that it is like the other symbols, except uh, everything's moving in the same direction. I also want to let you know I've got some more AVID election, uh, elective um, applications, so AVID, AVID, AVID. Good program. What's up? Oh, are you? That's awesome. Where are you guys going? Nice. Yeah, you get to see colleges. It's good. It's good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and look at uh, time lapse of occluded. I want to tell you this is what's called a thunder boomer like cloud, right? This is a thunderstorm. And you notice it's got this big kind of what we call the anvil. Do you know what an anvil is? For some of you that don't, so an anvil, anyway, it's like if you have the cloud, uh, this weather will go up and it goes up only so far and then it reaches the troposphere or it reaches the top of the troposphere, troposphere, and it can't punch through the troposphere so it begins to spread out. The anvil will point the direction that it's moving and what happens in this, if this is the ground, air is sucked up, I shouldn't say sucked up, air is pushed up in the front 
and then in the back is where the downdrafts are. So in the back of the storm is where you're going to have the rain and also any tornadoes that might happen. That's going to happen um, in the back. So it kind of goes uh, like a big vacuum. It sucks up this warm, moist air and it fuels itself, right? It's just kind of like feeding off of that warm, moist air, continuing this storm. So let's watch that happen. She's talking. I'd like to, you to hear her. An isolated thunderstorm rises high into the atmosphere. Precipitation begins to fall. You see all that rain? So that's the back of the storm. Sheets of rain reflect, refract, and disperse sunlight into the visible color spectrum. Clouds of ground lighten the activity increases as the storm tornadoes. begins to rotate. A tornado warning is issued. Source radar indicated rotation. Did anybody see the actual tornado on Friday? Did you? Like, with your own eyes, you saw it? That is so cool and terrifying. It's scary. Oh, I wish I could have seen it again. So you can see, right, this is, it went up to the top, hit the top of the troposphere, and then spread out. The explosive updraft flattened into the ceiling of the troposphere. Updraft just means air is going up. The only reason it gets dark is because the cloud is so thick, sunlight can't get through it. It's just so full of water. Let's go ahead and see. It brings severe weather. Strong winds, heavy precipitation. We were in Vermont um, and we got one night, my sister goes up in the mountains and they got thunder snow. So it was like snowing and thunder was going on. That's cool. And the temperature drops as warm air is cut off because you've got cold air mass, cold air mass coming together and it's pushing the warm air up drops in temperature. Anybody interested in weather at all? Yeah, kind of. It's a cool thing to um, research. My great uncle, Show Albert Showalter, he lived in the DC area of Virginia and he, he worked for the government with their weather, weather bureau. All right. Good? No? Oh, sorry. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so how it forms. Forms when a warm air mass gets caught between two cold air masses. Those air masses are more dense, so they come together, push that warm air up, and you get cloud formation. Changes from warm to cold, energy drops out. Did you try, guys do the uh, cloud in a jar? No. 
warm air, right, has energy in it, it evaporates, cold air has energy out of it, and the water condenses. So that's what um, happens. All right, and let's see, do I have anything else? Yes, flip it over please, and let's look at the back. So if you look at the back, you and your partners can work on this together if you like. It says the pictures below show the national weather over a four day period. Examine the maps and think about what is occurring, then answer the following questions. So for right now, with your pair share partners, look at Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and look at where that air is moving, and then um, from that, go ahead and answer the questions below. On your marks, get set, go. Look at those different fronts. Look at the fronts. Jose and Alexis, do you guys want to work together with you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As soon as he comes back, you go, man. So on Saturday, where did the cold mass start at? It's on, it's a on Saturday, where did the cold mass start? North. North, right, by Canada. And then you can see those little arrows are pointing downward. By Sunday, it was around Kansas City, Columbus, Ohio. Monday, it looks like that cold front had dropped all the way down into Baton Rouge and Columbia. And then by Tuesday, well, that cold front was all the way um, you know, into Florida. As that cold air mass moves southward towards Mexico, think about what's happening to that cold air mass, do you think? Is it warming? And then what happened to the warm front from Saturday to Monday? we're going to focus on tornadoes and tornado alley. Cole, can you do me a favor and shut that off for me today? 